Welcome to the lecture series on uh, transmission and distribution under the ages of e Sikshana program of VTU. A very novel initiative to reach quality content to students all over the state of Karnataka. This is Professor Uma Rao and I am bringing to you the lectures on transmission and distribution. So, in my previous session, I had introduced the concept of SAG in a transmission line and why SAG is necessary. So, if we do not permit an allowance for the SAG, then the transmission line would be very tense and there is a very high probability of the line snapping. And therefore, we have to provide for SAG. The only price you have to pay is a slightly longer conductor to be used more than the span. But this would buy a lot of reliability for your operation. And we saw that the SAG depends on the weight of the conductor per unit length, the tension on the wire and also on the length of the span. We did solve some problems where the supports are at the same level, in which case there would be a maximum sag at the center of the span. And we saw how to solve when we have supports at different levels like say in a hilly area or in an uneven terrain when the supports are at different area levels. So, there you have different occurrences possible. So, it is possible that your sag point, lowest sag point lies outside, outside the span or it could be at the lower support or it could be somewhere in between. So, let us consider some more examples to solve for such cases where the sags occur at different heights with respect to different support levels. Let us consider the second example. So, I have the weight of the conductor is 0 0.25 kg per meter, the span length is 180 meters, the maximum strength is 2000 kg and the factor of safety is 4. I have one support at 80 meters and a second support at 75 meters and you have to determine the minimum clearance from the ground that is for the conductor and also the minimum point of catenary that is point O. Let us see how to solve this simple. So, I have tension is 2000 by 500 kgs factor of safety is 4 as before. The only difference between this and the previous example we considered is that the levels have changed. There you considered 80 and 60 meters, here it is 80 and 75 meters. So, the difference in their levels is 5 meters. Now, I calculate simply A 1 and A 2 using the formula. I do not need A 2 because I only want the minimum clearance. So, I need only A 1, A 1 is L by 2 minus T s by W L. So, L is 180 meters the span and tension is 500 and S is 5. So, I get 34.44 meters. So, it lies inside the span that means the point of least clearance the lowest point is at a distance of 34.44 meters from the lower support that is the support which is at 75 meters. It is at a distance of horizontal distance of 34.44 meters. So, now that I got A 1, I know S 1. What is S 1? The distance between the lowest point and the lower support the distance between point O and the lower support. So, I calculate S 1, 
S1 is W A1 squared by 2 T and I get S1 is 0.296 meters. So, understand what we are having. So, I have the ground and I have the lower support here. This is at 75 meters. This is at 75 meters and I have this. So, this is the lowest sag that is point O and this distance is A1 and this vertical distance is S1 0.293 meters. So, what will be the vertical distance here of this from the ground? This would be 75 minus 0.296 because this is at a height of 75 meters. This is at a height of 0.296 meters with respect to this. Therefore, the point O would lie at 75 minus 0.296 meters. So, this is the least ground clearance, the minimum ground clearance. Okay? So, compare this with the previous example we saw where the point A1 was outside the span, the point A1 was outside the span. Now, the point A1 is inside the span. Now, let us take a practical case like what would happen. So, a transmission line conductor at a river crossing is supported from two towers. So, rivers normally flow down, down the landscape. So, one is at a height of 50 meters and another is at a height of 80 meters above the water level. So, the horizontal distance between the towers is 300 meters that is the span. The tension of the conductor is 2000 kg. Find the clearance between the conductor and water at a point midway between the towers. Okay. So, you have a river crossing, you have two towers, one is at a height of 80 meters and another is at a height of 50 meters. So, midway what is the clearance from the water? You can assume that weight of the conductor is 0.844 kg and the conductor takes the shape of a parabola. Even if it is not mentioned, you can always assume that because all our equations we have has made that assumption. Okay. So, now let us see what we do. Simple. Difference in the water levels is the difference in the height of the supports that is 30 meters. And I can calculate A1 and A2. A1 is minus 87 meters and A2 is 387 meters. So, what happens is you can see here A1 is negative. A1 is negative. So, what is the meaning of A1 being negative? That means this point lies outside outside the span. right? So, which means that since the value of A1 is negative, it means that the lowest point O is to the left of the support A1. Hence, between supports A1 and A2, the lowest point of the catenary will not exist. So, please be very clear, this lowest point O we are talking about is what I get from calculation. That is the lowest point of the catenary it may lie within the span or it may lie outside the span. So, if A1 is negative means it lies outside the span. A1 is negative means it lies outside the span. right? So, now what do I want? I want the clearance at the midpoint of the line. So, you just see now I have put very nicely I have put all the uh, calculations here in this figure. So, I have support A1, this is at 50 meters. I have support at A2, which is at 80 meters. So, this is my river crossing, right. So, A1 is at a height of 50 meters above the water, water level, and A2 is 80 meters above the water level. Clear? Now, what did I find? I found A1. A1 is minus 87 means it is outside. So, this is the point of minimum point of the catenary. Okay. So, this is just a calculation we have made. It is outside. 
it won't occur. So, your, your wire will bend like this, your wire will bend like this. So, the minimum clearance from the water level is A 1. Here, this, this part of the wire does not actually exist. It is the catenary equation which gave me that solution. Okay. Now, okay. so what do I calculate? I calculate S 1 and S 2 right? and S 2 happens to be 31.6. You have a formula to calculate S 1 and S 2 once you know A 1 and A 2. So, if I calculate S 2, it is 31.6. Now, let us take point B. So, the span, the span of the line is 300 meters. I want at midway, I want at midway. So, how much will this be? This, this will be 150 meters. This will be 150 meters. Okay. So, what will be the height of this point? We will see how to do it. I have calculated S 1, I have calculated S 2. Let point O will be the origin and point B is located midway between the two towers A 1 and A 2. Now, what do I need to do? Just see here. I need to get the coordinates of B with respect to O. I need to get the coordinates of B with respect to O. Okay. So, where is O? O is at 87 to the left of A 1, to the left of A 1, right, minus 87, minus 87. And I need to get the coordinate of B, the vertical coordinate of B, Y B with respect to O, that is this distance. I have shown it in this figure, but I have to calculate it, right. Why I am showing you is you pictureize what we are trying to calculate. So, how do I calculate? So, I have, now I have to calculate. So, x b is a 1 plus l by 2, the distance. So, you can see here, this is at a distance of 87 from a 1, we found that from a 1 here is the support, lower support and this point is half of the span. So, it is 150. So, this point, the horizontal distance with respect to O would be 87 plus 150. So, that is 237 meters. Now, y is equal to, we have the formula, y is equal to w x squared by 2 t. So, y b, what is b? b is the midpoint of the line is w x b squared by 2 t and I get 11.85 meters. So, now we let us go back to the figure. You see, so, this point B is at 237 meters horizontally with respect to O and 11.85 meters with respect to 11.85 meters with respect to point O vertically. So, I have got the coordinates of point B, right. I have got S2, S2 is the vertical distance of the higher tower with respect to O and I have got S 1 which is the vertical distance of the lower tower with respect to O. So, we got all the points. So, now I need the clearance of this point from the water level, this point from the water level. See, we know this whole distance is 80, this whole distance is 80, this distance is 11.85 and this distance is 31.6. So, this distance would be 80. If I do 80 minus 31.6, if I remove this, I get this level, this plus this, that is 11.85, I will get the distance of B from the water level. That is what is asked in the question. So, the clearance of point B from the water level is equal to height of A 1 minus S 1. So, you get this answer. Okay. The clearance of point B between the towers and water level is 60.26 meters. You can do the calculations. So, the figure explains everything, how you can calculate. So, whenever you want to solve problems of supports at different heights, first draw the figure. That is very important. 
So, once you have the figure in place, once you have the figure in place, then you will know what are the distances that you need to calculate. So, you progress as follows. So, you find the difference between the height of the towers, calculate A 1 and A 2, decide, decide whether the lowest point of the catenary lies within the span or outside the span and from the values of A 1 and A 2 get S 1 and S 2. So, S 1 and S 2 are the vertical distances from the lowest point of the catenary, the lowest point of the catenary of the two supports, the distance vertical distance of the two supports from the lowest point of the catenary. So, once you know A 1, A 2, S 1, S 2 just put it properly in the figure in place. So, the calculations are very simple and it would be very easy and you would not make any mistake if you draw the figure correctly. Now, let us take one more example. There are two towers at a height of 30 meters and 90 meters respectively supporting a transmission line over a water crossing. So, the span is 500 meters that is the horizontal distance between the towers and the tension is 1600 kg. So, find the minimum clearance of the conductor and water. Also find the clearance midway between the supports. Weight of the conductor is 1.5 kg per meter. You can assume that the towers base are at a water level, considered to be at the water level. So, we have all the data in place, very similar to the previous problem we solved. Let us see if there is any difference. So, I have the length, the span, the tension, the W the and the S. I calculate A 1 and I calculate A 2. Now, the first thing after calculating A 1 and A 2 is decide whether the lowest catenary point is within the span or outside the span. If A 1 is positive, it is within the span. If A 1 is negative, it is outside the span. So, you calculate A 1 and A 2, then I will calculate S 1, X 1 S 1 is 6.97 meters. So, what is S 1? The height of the lowest point from the lower support. So, the minimum clearance is this. So, very simple you see here, I have the lower support here, I have the lower support here this is the lowest point that is our point O as we have considered before. So, this distance, this is at a height of 30 meters, this is at a height of 30 meters and the distance between these two is 6.97. Therefore, the distance between this point and the ground that is the water would be 30 minus 6.97. So, it is at 23.03 meters from the water level. So, very simple to calculate. So, considering, so we have done the point of minimum clearance. Next, there is one more part of the question which asks you what is the clearance midway between the line. So, I consider point O as the origin and the I have to find the coordinates of the midpoint that is point B, x B and y B. Okay. So, x B would be L by 2 minus A 1 because L by 2 is half of the span that is 500 by 2, 250 meters and A 1 is the distance from the minimum support. So, I would get 128 meters and y b I can calculate is 7.68 meters. So, the point b is at 7.68 above o. So, let us see here. So, you see here I have o right. The point b I have calculated is 7.68 above o 
and O itself we found in the previous case is at a height of 23.03 meters. Therefore, and this is above that. So, the distance of point B from the water would be the distance of O plus the distance of B from O that is 30.71 meters. So, the midpoint of the conductor would lie 30.71 meters above above the water level. As I told you, if you mark mark the points, it will be very easy to calculate. So, you see here, this is the figure, whatever we have solved. So, as you keep solving, you, you just draw this figure and as you keep solving, you just enter the numbers. See, A 1 is at 30 meters, see how nice it is. A 2 is at 90 meters, right. The point of minimum catenary, lowest point in the catenary that is point O is at 23.03 because you calculate A 1 and you calculate S 1. So, you can get this point. Then B is midway in the span okay. and the point of B is 7.68 above O. So, you can calculate all the points, you can calculate all the points. And B is midway means this A 1 to B, this is 150, no sorry not 150, 250, it is 500. So, this is 250. So, you can get all the distances you want, okay. So, if you draw the figure correctly. So, I think these examples have shown you how to calculate the sag, when you have supports at different levels, when you have supports in the same way, when the minimum catenary point is outside the span, when the minimum catenary point is inside the span and so on. I would suggest all of you take any of the examples and try to see the effect of one parameter. For example, if you have solved a problem with a factor of safety of 5. So, again try to solve it with a factor of safety of 4, 3, 2 and see the effect of FOS on the sag. Similarly, you can try changing the weight and see. So, that will give you a feel for how the sag is affected by various parameters. Now, let us proceed further and take up another objective for our learning that is to see how the weather conditions affect the sag. Obviously, common sense should tell you that the weather will affect the sag because the weight will change, the tension will change. So, obviously, weather will have an effect on sag. So, normally two parameters are considered to evaluate this. The first is the effect of wind and the second is the effect of ice, effect of wind and effect of ice. So, let us see what is going to happen because of these two parameters. So, the formula derived earlier accounts for sag only due to the weight of the conductor. So, ice and wind will obviously increase the effective weight of the conductor per unit length because it is an additional weight on the conductor. So, the conductor tension also will increase depending on the wind direction. So, obviously, I have to account for this when I calculate sag. Let us see. Ice, where will it form? It will form on the surface, it will fall on the overhead conductors and it will act in the same way as the conductor weight because it is there on top, it will try to pull it down. A maximum vertical load that the structure must withstand is determined by the ice loads. If there is an ice, what is the maximum vertical load? We have to find out how much of ice it can withstand. Maximum traverse loads on the structures are determined by ice loading when amalgamated with wind. Okay. Considering wind force and ice loading at a time, the conductor will have a some resultant weight which will be definitely more than the natural weight of the conductor. 
and this resultant weight will act at some angle with respect to the vertical. The weight of the conductor always acts in the vertical direction. The weight always because of the gravity will act in the vertical direction. Ice also will act in the vertical direction, but the wind will act transversely. So, the net resultant weight will be at some angle. So, let us see how the calculations of SAG change when we consider these two parameters. So, we will make some simple assumptions like before to ease our computation. So, the first assumption I make is that the ice is coated uniformly around the conductor. It will give me a fairly good idea about the effect of ice. So, let the weight of the ice be W i kg per unit length. Okay. So, how do I estimate it? The weight is volume into density. The weight is volume into density. So, this is my conductor, the center one. And you see I have a uniform coating assumed to be uniform. It will not be like that, but it is ok. It will not make too much of a difference in our calculations because exact accuracy is not required here. right? So, I have a uniform coating around the conductor. So, this is a cross section. So, if I have ice around it and I cut it and view it cross sectionally, this is how it would look. So, D is the diameter of the conductor and T is the thickness of ice coated. So, what will be the volume of the ice? So, if you take the bigger circle, the bigger circle, the diameter of the bigger circle is d plus 2 t, right. So, if I want the volume, volume, I will take the volume per unit length because I want the weight per unit length. So, I will take the volume considering unit length. So, what will be the volume? Unit length that is 1, 1 meter into the cross sectional area, cross sectional area of the ice. So, you know the cross sectional area of a circle pi by 4 d square, right. And ice is here and in the center is the conductor. So, I have to remove the area of the conductor from the area of the bigger circle. So, this area, this area has to be removed from the area of the bigger circle as simple as that. So, the area of the bigger circle is pi by 4 the diameter of the outer circle is d plus 2 t squared minus the area of the inner circle is pi by 4 d square and into 1. Why 1? Volume. So, I am considering unit length. I am considering unit length. So, it is equal to 1. The length is equal to 1. So, if I cancel out this, I get the weight of the ice per unit length is equal to density of ice into pi t into d plus t. What are all these various terms? Density of ice we know, it might be slightly different depending on the ambient uh, pollutions which are there in a particular locality. Okay. So, t is the thickness of the ice over the conductor, d is the diameter of the conductor. This is the weight of ice. Now, what about the wind? So, the force of the wind is assumed to act horizontally, okay. it is like a transverse pulling, pulling the conductor. So, let w, w is the force of the wind per unit length. So, what is the force? It is the pressure into the projected area, pressure into projected area okay, per unit length. So, area, I will just take a section d plus 2 t here, this entire length, because I am taking a transverse direction of the wind, this length is d plus 2 t and per unit length I am taking, so I am taking 1, length into breadth, trying to do length into breadth, the projected area. Why 2 t? I am assuming there is also ice because we are going to consider both wind and ice. If ice is not there, T will be 0, that is all. Okay. So, the wind pressure depends on the shape of the conductor and the velocity of the wind, how much of pressure will be there. So, the wind pressure acts transverse, the ice will add to the weight. So, this is the net weight, W t is the net weight. 
got it? So, W is the weight of the conductor, the weight of the ice will just add to it, the weight of the winds is transverse. So, I have a net weight at an angle of theta. So, your conductors now also experience a pull, transverse pull because of the wind and also a vertical pull, both will be there. So, simple, the total weight will be root of w plus w i square, these act vertically, this acts horizontally and tan theta is vertical distance by w plus w i, clear? And sag in the tension is given by S is equal to w t l squared by 2 t formula. I need the vertical sag, the vertical sag is S cos theta, see here. I need the vertical component, so the, the sag will be in this direction. That means, it because I told you, it has now because of the wind, it has both a vertical and a transverse force. So, it will get a force in a particular direction at an angle theta and physically it will sag in one direction. That is vertical sag will be S cos theta, the vertical sag is S cos theta. So, you can see that the weight increases with wind and ice and definitely the sag will increase with wind and ice. So, if wind is not there put w w is 0, if ice is not there w i is 0 as simple as that. So, there are many places where you have wind but not ice and there are places where you have ice but not wind. So, suitably you can use the formula for any of the cases. Now, let us take a simple uh, example. An ACSR conductor that is aluminum core steel reinforced has the following data. The tensile strength is 1000 kgs. We are considering a factor of safety of 4 and the normal copper area that is the cross section area is 100 millimeter square and the size of the conductor is 15 plus 4 by 5 mm and the weight is 0.2 kg per meter and the span length is 100 meters. So, be careful here you have a mixture of units, you have meters, millimeter and so on. And I think you are seeing for the first time the size as 15 plus 4 by 5 mm. So, this is the kind of specification used for the ACSR conductors. So, what it means is how do you read that data? So, it means it has 15 strands of aluminum and 4 strands of steel because you are reinforcing the aluminum conductor with steel and each of them are 5 mm in diameter that is the meaning of that specification. So, the total number of conductors will be 15 plus 4 will be 19 and in how many layers you recollect the figure I had shown you about stranded conductors, there will be layers. There is a normal formula used where the number of layers is given by n, n is the total number of strands and uh, n is the number of layers. So, n is equal to 3 n squared minus 3 n plus 1. So, you, you have to solve for that formula to find out for this particular specification of 15 plus 4 by 5, how many layers will be there in the conductor? So, here n is 19 and if you solve for you, you uh, for uh, the lower case n that is the number of layers, you get 3. The effective diameter of the conductor is again given by a very simple formula d is equal to 2 n minus 1 into d that is 25 mm. Remember these two formulae because we are not going to derive them. Just remember how you can calculate the effective diameter of stranded and reinforced conductors. So, the effective diameter is 2.5 centimeters. So, this is the diameter you have to use for computation. Why? Because I have 19 strands, okay, they will all be twisted or there is they are in some fashion. Some are steel, some are aluminum. So, I have to get what would be the effective diameter? So, these two formula will help you to find it out. So, that is equal to 2.5 centimeters. Now, 
we are ready for the computations. So, the tensile strength we all know is the tension T is the tensile strength by the factor of safety. So, the ultimate tensile strength is 1000 kg, it is given in the data, factor of safety is 4 which is pretty high, 250 kg. So, sag in still air, no ice, no wind, nothing will be done. S is equal to W L squared by 80, you know the formula, we have used it so many times, it is 1 meter, it is 1 meter, the span is 100 meters here. Now, what is the sag when I have a conductor covered with 0.7 centimeters of ice and the density of ice is 917 kg per meter cubed. So, you see now be careful there is a mixture of units, centimeter, millimeter here now we are having meter cubed. So, as I said this ice density normally is in this range, sometimes it may be 914, sometimes it may be 920 depending on the composition in the atmosphere at the particular location, but it is close to 900 uh, kg per meter cube. So, W i we know is the density of ice into pi by 4 d plus 2 t squared minus d squared into 1. So, density of ice is given 917 pi by 4, so this is simplified. So, all these 10 to the power of minus 2, 10 to the power of minus 2 is for the conversion of centimeters to meters, centimeter to meters I convert. So, this is where I said keep a tab on the units, do not mix up the units, otherwise you will get some absurd answers. The sag sometimes may become more than the length of the conductor itself. So, the weight of the ice is 0.645 kg per meter. So, in which direction will this weight act? In the downward direction. So, it is as if, as if the weight of the conductor has increased by 0.645 kg per meter. You can see what is the weight of the ice. The weight of the conductor is only 0.2 kg per meter, but the weight of the ice is 0.645 kg per meter. So, now the sag you can again recalculate, it is 4.225 meters. So, without ice what was the sag? It was 1 meter without ice and with a coating as small as 0 0.7 centimeters, 0 0.7 centimeters is very small. There are regions where the you know the fall of the ice is much more, the thickness of the ice. So, the sag has increased to 4.225 meters. Now, let us say over and above the ice, I also have wind and a wind pressure is 10 kg per meter square. Okay. So, I have to calculate the weight due to this, this is the formula d plus 2 p into p. So, the diameter is 2.5 and thickness of the ice is 0 0.7, so this is centimeter, this converts it into meters and pressure is 10 kg per meter square, so it is 0 0.39 kg per meter, 0 0.39 kg per meter. If you do not put this conversion factor, you would get 39 kg per meter, then you will get absurd answers, so never forget that. Okay. So, now, this is the weight of the wind. How is the wind acting? It is acting transversely, transversely. So, W t is, you have a formula, these are the two formulae we have seen. So, I get the total weight is the square root of the horizontal plus vertical components is 0 0.93 kg per meter and the theta is 24.77 degrees. So, what it means is the ice will act in this direction, the wind in this, so the total is like this, this is W t and this angle is what you have found, it is 24.7 degrees, 24.7 degrees. So, I get sag is equal to? W L squared by 80, I get 4.65 meters 
and I have a vertical sag of 4.347 meters. Now, compare this with ice, it is 4.225, 4.347, not a very significant change in the vertical sag, but however, the life of the line will reduce with wind because it is also having a transverse force which I am not accounting when I find the vertical sag. So, vertical sag only tells me how much that bend that lowest point where it will be how much it will bend, but then it does not tell me about the pull give me a picture of how the wire is getting the line is getting pulled. Okay. So, though the sag has only marginally changed with the wind, however with heavy winds because of the transverse force there will be a wear and tear of the line and the life of the line will definitely be reduced. Now, we will see one more simple example, a transmission line has a span of 150 meters between level supports, both are the same. The conductor section area is 2 centimeter per square, the tension is 2000 kg, the specific gravity of the conductor is 9.9 .9 grams per centimeter cubed and wind pressure is 1.5 kg per meter, calculate sag and vertical sag. Again a little bit of mixing up of units, be careful. So, L the span is 150 meters, T is 2000 uh, kg. And weight of the conductor will be specific gravity into volume and you know in the formula W is weight per unit length. So, when I calculate the volume, I take only the length to be 1 meter okay. and it is 2 centimeter square, 2 centimeter square. So, I get and this is in grams per centimeter cubed. So, I will get 1.98 kgs, 1.98 kgs, okay. And what is this 100? 1 meter is 100 centimeters, 1 meter is 100 centimeters, this is 2, okay, 2 centimeters square and this is again grams per centimeter cubed. So, since these two are in, in the order of centimeter, the unit length of 1 meter also I have multiplied by 100 or you can convert everything to meter and use this as 1, but be careful all of them must have the same unit. So, I get 1.98 kg per meter, this is the weight per meter. So, the total weight is root of 1.98 plus 1.52 square because there is only wind, it is 2.48. So, this is the sag and I can find out theta tan inverse of the weight of the wind and weight of the conductor, I get 37.23 degrees. So, the vertical sag is 2.77 meters, simple. Another problem again to uh, highlight the effect of ice and wind, a uh, transmission line has a span of 275 meters. The diameter of the conductor is 1.96 centimeters and the weight is 0.865 kg per meter. Ultimate strength is 8060, ultimate strength always means the breakdown tensile strength with an FOS of 2, a coating of ice of 1.27 centimeter and a wind pressure of 3.9 grams per centimeter cubed. Calculate the sag if weight of ice is 1 cc is 0.91 grams, 0.91 grams, so 0.91 grams per centimeter cubed. So, again you see mixture of units, centimeter, meter, be careful. So, the span length is 275 meters, tension is ultimate strength by FOS that is 4030 kg. The diameter of the conductor is 1.96 centimeter and of ice is 1.27 centimeter and the weight of the conductor is 0.865 kg per meter. So, the volume of ice per meter that is 100 centimeters 
will be pi t into d plus d into 100. So, if you retain this in centimeter, convert this to centimeter. If you keep this in meter, convert this to meter, either way. So, I get 1, 2, 8, 8 centimeter cubed is the volume of ice. So, weight of ice per meter length of the conductor is 0.91. This is in grams. So, divide by 1000 to convert it into kg. To convert it into kg. So, I get 1.172 kg. That is the weight of ice. Wind pressure is pressure into d plus 2 t into 100. Again, this is because the data is given in centimeter. So, I get 1.755 kg. Now, you have all the parameters. There is no way you can go wrong here. The equations are very simple. So, the only place you would go wrong is in your units if you forget to convert the units. Okay. So, now that you know the weight of the conductor, the weight of ice and the weight of wind, you can find the total weight and the total sag. You can calculate theta, you can also get the vertical sag. Simple, right? So, with this, we have seen a lot of examples with sag. We have seen what the sag is, why it is important, how the sag is affected by different parameters, how to calculate the sag when you have supports at the same level, when you have supports at different levels, when you have ice on it, when you have wind on it and so on. And next time you go travel, you see transmission lines, high voltage transmission lines between towers, observe the sag and recollect whatever we have discussed and why this sag is important in the system. Now that we have seen sag, let us move on to the next objectives of our learning. Let us see how we can protect our transmission lines. When we discussed first overhead and underground cables, we saw that one of the disadvantages of overhead lines is it is exposed, it is completely exposed to the weather and therefore, from a safety perspective and from a maintenance perspective, we have to protect it. So, we will be next looking at vibration dampers and protection against lightning and ground wires and materials used in insulators. And these topics together will tell you how to protect the transmission lines against various kinds of faults. I will take this up in detail in the next session. We will watch the next session with some interesting videos on how lightning strikes, how it affects the local environment and all the other factors. We will close the session for now.